final day of the season today against Wigan. Nothing to play for in particular, apart from pride and, and a mid-table status sort of thing. But it's a good time to reflect on the season and start to talk about next season as well in today's episode. Since you were last here, we have been atrocious, quite frankly. Not been very good at all. Uh, you were last here for the win against Rochdale and the loss to Rotherham. We followed that loss to Rotherham with a 1-0 win against Burton. Tirek with the goal, but since then, a 0-0 draw with Wimbledon, which is OK. A 2-1 loss to, uh, to Doncaster, Mark Mason, grabbing his only goal in between episodes there, which is a bit disappointing. He's only finished with 11 goals this season, which is not as many as I hoped he would get. It does kind of make me think maybe next season we need someone else up front for us. After that, we had a 1-1 draw against uh, against Fleetwood. Ben Whitfield with the goal in that game relatively late on. And then two losses, a 3-2 loss to Colchester with Douglas Hurst and Mark Hunter getting the goals for us. And then a 1-0 loss to MK Dons with Jonathan Lecco scoring for them and Tyler Monk picking up an injury in that game. We've had quite a few injuries as well in between episodes. Woodthorpe, Monk and Rickwood all with injuries right now. If we look at the injury history, uh, if we look down here, Mason's had... Uh, an injury, but we know about that one already, obviously, of course. If we look at injuries from last episode, because we had Mason injured last episode, uh, before last episode sort of thing. Uh, last episode was on the 25th of March, I remember that. So Belcher got injured in there. But since then, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine injuries, which is quite a lot, I've got to say, uh, for a short space of time. In fact, it was only a few weeks, actually. In fact, two or three weeks, nine injuries. That's an awful lot. So it's been... A bit frustrating with all the injuries. Uh, Woodthorpe has missed the most. He's missed. <laughs> he's had five injuries and missed two months of football, Woodthorpe. So despite him being a very good CDM, he has missed quite a lot this season because of injury. So the injuries haven't really helped us, but there's no excuse for it really. We just haven't played particularly well. As a result, we are 15th in the table today. So it's not the best. The highest we could finish is 12th. We're on 60 points, by the way. So we could finish as high as 12th if other teams above us lose. And we have quite a nice goal difference swing. I don't think we're going to get there. We could finish as low as 18th as well. So anywhere between those is happy. You know, 18th where we finished last season. So anything above that is, is fine by me. We're currently six points ahead of where we finished last season. Well, 54 points last season, 60 points this season. I'm happy with that. Any improvement is, is progress for me. So I think that's okay. The issue for me comes from the lack of goals that we've scored this season. I think if we have a look at the, the league table as a whole, we've only scored 43 goals this season, which I think is one of the lowest in, the team. in fact, it's right down there in uh, one of the lowest scored this season, which is a bit of a worry. We need to address that next season. In terms of goals conceded, it's not actually that bad. Goals against, we are quite high. In fact, actually, we're the, we've only conceded the second, the, most, the second most amount of goals this season. I didn't realise it was actually that good. That's phenomenal, I've got to say. Only to concede 47 goals this season. If we just had a better attack, if we were better up front... Imagine how we could be this season. Imagine we could be right up there if we just scored lots of goals. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought we conceded a lot more goals than that. I thought we were a lot further down this, this conceded table. But that's really, really good, actually. Which makes me think, actually, because I was thinking we need to try and revamp the defence a little bit. But clearly not, because we can't get much better than that. We might concede quite a few goals today, though. We have rotated the side heavily. We played two days ago or three days ago, something like that. So a lot of players are still very tired. And for the final game of the season, with not much to play for. We may as well just rotate it completely. So a bit of a different lineup for you with Clement still in goal, of course, and Thornton still at left back. But Dan Happy and David Marshall come into that centre-back partnership with Farrell moving out to right back. Ruben Sumut is going to play his final game for the club in that CDM position with Nankwo and Hawkins in front of him. Turiak on the left. Douglas Hurst on the right and Mark Mason starts up front for a bit of a, a different lineup today. But I think, you know, with the final game of the season, a few of these players are going to be playing their final game for the club today as well. Give them a good send off. Hopefully, we pick up a win against Wigan and finish a little bit higher than 15. Right then, kickoff is upon us. Final game of the season away to Wigan. It's, no one wants to go to Wigan, let alone on the last day of the season sort of thing. But we're here. Wigan are, where are they in the table? They are. 13th to so a team we actually could overtake today if we get a good result against them. Hull are champions of the league. They win the league. They're going to the championship next season. And Bolton, it looks like you're going to be joining them in the championship next season as Wigan take the lead in today's game, unfortunately. Look out for Peterborough, though. They could overtake Bolton, so that's quite an exciting one. Uh, there could be a little bit of movement as well in the in the playoffs as, as Middlesbrough 
actually look safe as things stand right now as they carry on winning. But Portsmouth and Rotherham could swap around. At the bottom end of the table, uh, Bradford, Leighton Orient and Fleetwood have all been relegated. So watch out for Rochdale and Luton. They're the games we should be looking out for. So if you want to keep an eye out on that kind of thing uh, and see if there's any changes to the promotion and relegation stuff. Eyes peeled. So I actually am really surprised. I didn't realise we'd only come... Well, I knew we conceded like 48, 49 goals this season. But I didn't realise that was only the second fewest goals conceded in the entire division. I thought other teams had done a lot better than that. So really, actually, our defence is pretty decent. It's just what's in front of the defence isn't very good. Like, if we just scored... You know, if, if Nathan had got 10 more goals this season, if, if Monk had scored 10 more goals, both the Monks had scored 10 more goals this season before we sold one in January... We could be right in the playoffs, to be fair. The form we had between September and November was absolutely superb. We just won. I think we only lost two games in that period of two months, two or three months. That was really, really good. It's just after that period, we've not really been particularly good and we've got progressively worse through the season. So I think if we if we kept that form, we'd be in a much better position. I think if we keep the spine of the squad together, the, the key players, it's, it's, obviously the defence has done really well this season, better than I thought in terms of the defence in entirety and conceding goals. If we keep our defence core pretty similar, I think next season, if we really improve the, the midfield and attack, we could actually have a real good challenge for the playoffs. Right, table update. Rochdale have gone ahead of Luton on the final day, so Rochdale could be saving themselves. Uh, Middlesbrough and Portsmouth have swapped places, but no one else going to the promotion battle and by looks of things, actually, Peterborough, Bolton and Hull aren't playing today, maybe, for some reason. Um, they're not. I'm not quite sure why all the teams aren't playing together right now. So actually, Luton has still got time to uh, to fix things um, after today to try and avoid relegation. But they need to win it if they want to do that. Sean Hawkins just scored a goal for us. How did that one go in the back of the net then? Mason on the ball, Nankwo to Turiak. Turiak back to Nankwo as uh, the ball played out wide. Back more centrally. Mason on the ball into Turiak. Turiak's ball into Hawkins. Hawkins, decent effort there, to be fair. That was a good goal. We're back in today's game. Doesn't really matter too much. We move up to 61 points, but it's not really going to affect anything around us. We need to get an, another goal to send us up the table just a little bit. So there's a lot to celebrate this season. Our, our defence has clearly been quite good. It's just that our attack hasn't been very good. So we have lost a lot, a lot of games. Uh, we've drawn... In fact, you said before, I saw it before... We've won 15, drawn 15, lost 15. So it's been pretty even. We just need to turn a few of those losses into draws and a few of those draws into wins. And really, we, we have a pretty decent chance of, of getting playoffs or something next season. So it's just finding those extra attacking players that can really strengthen our squad, maybe. Wigan, though, looking to come forward. Not too long left in this game, 10 minutes or so. So one goal either way, I think, will probably seal the victory as Wigan looking to try and get that goal as Owens on the ball into the Bennett who sh shoots from distance and puts it in the back of a net. You hate to see that. McClement is a good goalkeeper, but he's not very good at dealing with shots from range. We've seen it in a few episodes where he just doesn't let the where he just doesn't deal with shots from distance and things like that. I think we'll keep him well, we will keep him next season. Whether he'll be our first choice next season, that's another matter. Depends who's available, sort of thing. But the summer transfer policy, like the last two seasons, I think, is anyone who's going to be better than what we've already got will probably get a contract. Closing moments of the game. Wigan pressing for another one as Maris on the edge of the area. Back to Bennett, the goal scorer. They're just trying to work another one just to make sure we can't get a point out of this game. If they get one more goal, that's certainly going to be game over as Butterworth comes forward, puts the cross in. It's a penalty for Wigan. A great way to finish the season then would be to save this penalty, but... McClement has not been as prolific as saving penalties as a former goalkeeper. It's actually still the goalkeeper at the club, Jed Andrews. He's probably going to go this summer because he's just not good enough for League One, I don't think. He wasn't good enough last season. He won't be good enough next season. So he'll probably go into his contract. He's on £800 a week or so. The penalty goes in the back of the net. Wigan win it 3-1. It doesn't affect us at all. We still stay 15th in the table. It's been a decent season. I would have... Oh, we dropped down to 16th, actually. That's quite depressing. I would have. I really wanted top half, and for a while it really looked like we were going to get it, but our form in the second half of the season has really been quite abysmal. So it's, it's frustrating, but at least we have improved from last season. Six points, two places, it's, 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 it's improvement, so I'm happy. Fans are criticising my tactics, interestingly. We've used the 4-1-4-1 for pretty much all the season, to be fair, and while it worked for three months, for the rest of the season it hasn't worked. So they've got a point, but... 
Next season, if we get some top players in each position, I think it's going to be a really strong formation to use. End of season awards then, and it's Turiak who wins the fans player of the season with a Suko second, interestingly, Mark Mason third. McClement, the goalkeeper, he's been the signing of a season and young player of a season, Gabriel Turiak, which is interesting. Now his contract's up for renewal next, ah, oh, next season. Fantastic. I thought his contract's up for renewal this summer, but it's not. Wasn't sure he was going to stay or not, so that's quite good. The board are pretty happy with me. They're very happy with my tight control of the wage budget, but not so happy with the reform with the 4-1-4-1. Well, we'll show you next season what we can do with the 4-1-4-1. Pre-season then, only four weeks. I want it to be five weeks. Four weeks seems very, very short for pre-season. I don't like that. So the board have set our initial budget at £33,000 per week with 200 k to spend so an extra three and a half thousand pound on the wage budget that's absolutely fine i'll take that we finally have got a youth rating we're now category four youth facility which is really really good before that we had no rating at all so hopefully now we'll get a few better players in that would be very good talking of players then we need to talk about contracts right contracts who's expiring this season quite a lot of players joe howell is expiring we'll offer him a new contract it's joe howell obviously uh, Nathan McGinley is going to be going because we're just not using him at all. We've got Turiak who can play left back. McGinley's going to have to go. Ruben Samut definitely going. £1,000 per week for two seasons has been an absolute waste of money. So I'm so glad to see the back of him. Dan Happy, he's not played games this season and he's not really cutting it at this level. So he's also going to go. Whitfield on £1,800. Now he has been good. He's a fantastic, he's just an awful lot of money. That's the issue. If he takes a pay cut, I'll give him a new contract. But I just don't think he's going to want that pay. He is taking a bit of a pay cut, to be fair. Uh, let's get rid of this one-year extension. because we, that, that's, that's been the bane for me this season. A few players last season had this option in it, which I forgot about. So they automatically got a one-year extension and other teams didn't want to buy them. Ruben Samut, for example, he's been just on £1,000 per week because he had this optional or this one-year extension. So we'll remove that straight away. We don't want that. We don't want an unused substitute fee. Take this down to £1,000. 1 1.7 he wants now. Just, I'm really going to be quite ruthless. I don't really want to be... He's not accepting that contract. I don't want to pay him 1.8k per week. So Whitfield might go. Nanquo, potentially we might keep him as backup but only as backup, just because I'm a, a bit concerned. Although he doesn't want to stay at the club, I don't think. If we offer him a new contract, he's not bothered about signing one. So Nankwo's going to go. Jed Andrew will go, as we said before. He's not cooking the mustard. Danny Douglas Hurst, if he takes a pay cut, will keep him at the club. He doesn't want a pay cut, though. Right. It's £550 per week. Please take this. Please take a pay cut, lad. Please. Just any sort of pay cut would be quite nice. Then he can stay at the club. He's not taking it yet. £25 per week pay cut. It's, it's enough to keep him at the club for another year. Danny Douglas Hurst. Uh, Warren Woodthorpe. Now, he has been really good, but has missed a lot of football this season. Again, he's got the potential to be at this level. He's not quite there yet, but he's the best player we've got in CDM right now. So we'll offer him a new contract as well. He's currently on 850. He wants a pay cut as well. All these players are quite nice wanting pay cuts. I do like it. Get rid of that new substitute fee. Let's take it down even more. 650. He wants 800 now. 700. He wants 825. 700. 800. 750. He takes 750 so a £50, £100 pound per week pay cut. That's nice. Belcher is, ah, uh, well, I just, I don't think he's good enough. He was sort of a panic buy, I've got to say, at the end of last season. I, I think maybe, if he's only good enough for Panorama National, nowhere near good enough. He's been the backup player this season. Three starts, seven substitute appearances. Maybe we send him on loan somewhere. Maybe. He's on £750 per week. Uh, if we offer him a new contract, he wants a slight pay cut, slight pay cut. He can have a big pay cut and then he can stay at the club sort of thing, lad. 550 is what we're going to offer him. 550. Take it or leave it. Otherwise, because we're not going to use you, you're going to go out on loan next season. That's kind of the, the what I'm thinking. 600. He's not taking 600. So Belcher. See you later. And of course, these lone players as well. 
Uh, Tyler Monk's been really, really good this season. I have been impressed with him. When does his contract finish? We, he's on a lot of money per week. Potentially we could get him next season, but I'm not too sure if we're going to use him or not. But he has played well this season. Asuko's been good, but I just don't think he's good enough for this level. So we might get a new right back next season. I do want James Thornton again, though. He was really good. Really top quality. In fact, if we make an offer, can we... Or Lincoln don't want to let him go. Because Lincoln City... Uh, no, we don't want to send the offer. Lincoln City have been relegated from the championship. They finished 22nd in the championship. So next season, we are going to be playing Lincoln City, which is really exciting. This is the first time, obviously in this series, that we're playing them in a competitive game. But it's the first time ever in, in the history of, of the two clubs that they'll be playing each other in a competitive game. They've never, ever been in the same division. So this is making history next season. So as much as I would love to have James Thornton next season, because Lincoln are going to be in the same division as us, I don't think let us have him, which is going to be an issue. Uh, I really want Heems back. Heems has been really, really good this season. He's been a top player. His contract expires at the end of the season. So we'll keep him on the, on the scouting list and hopefully we'll sign him on a free transfer. And then Sean Hawkins as well, of course. He's been very good as well. When does his contract end with Birmingham next season? So we might get him back on loan next season. I like them both. What that means is the only players we actually have on contract next season are Turiak Hunter, Farrell, Mason, McClement, Rickwood and Marshall. That's not a side. That's not a squad. So if all these players go, bloody hell, we're going to be busy over summer. So as things stand, we are currently spending £21,000 on wages. Next season, committed spend right now is £17,000 apparently. I think that'll be less than that once all those players have gone. So we will have quite a big wage budget to play with, with new players. We could offer some nice money to some players out there. So it could be quite decent. It's... It is a bit risky, though. Very risky, I think. So uh, we'll see how it pans out. Next season could be really good. Equally, it could be quite bad. I tell you what, I will try and keep offering a contract to Ben Whitfield just because I think he scored six goals, nine assists this season. That has been really, really good. He's been a top player for us. Uh, Asuka actually didn't realise he had 10 assists. That's really good as well. Look at the assist. 10 is really top quality. But it's these players that we already have under contract this season. They're the ones that have got the highest average ratings this season sort of thing. It is the players that are running out of contract down here that haven't played well. So really, they, they should go. Anyway, it's it's been it's been a weird season. We had a really bad start. And then the rest of that first half of the season was superb. Second half was just been progressively worse and worse and worse. To the point we finished 16th when we could have finished in the top 10, I think, this season. I'm not sure when Luton and like Peterborough and stuff play their final games of the season and whatnot. That seems a little bit odd to me how they're still not played when the playoff semi-finals are like... Well, the men start like Wednesday or Tuesday. Yeah, the playoffs are literally starting tomorrow, apparently. So I'm not quite sure when those teams are playing their games to find out who's actually going to be in the playoffs because it could still go either way between Peterborough and Bolton. Either way, it doesn't really affect us, so we won't stick around for it. But thank you for sticking around this season. It's been, it's been a bit of a weird one because there's not really been a whole lot to play for. But thank you for being here. Hopefully next season we'll push on towards the playoffs and that'll be a lot more exciting sort of thing. A lot of changes are going to happen over summer, so stick around for that. Hope you all have a good weekend. I'll see you again on Monday for the next episode. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.